As we come to the end stage of our life, we find ourselves trying to remember the good times, trying to forget the bad times. The dry wind of the wasteland blew over my face, digging into my lungs with each breath as we all appeared in a spot at least two kilometers from Los Alicorn. The distance from where the ministry was located and how deep it was, had to be under the dead city, was proof of how powerful Aquila was in her new body. Though I should have known that from getting the memories from when she had control of my body. She'd managed to use a massive teleportation spell to bring my body from one side of Equestria to the other, though the magical drain had almost been too much for her. This time, however, she'd managed to bring not only my uncle, Mom, Stormy, Aura, White Oak, and myself this far. She'd also gotten two scientists who must have been in the observation room. To make matters worse, she looked like she, the cost of magic hadn't even bothered her. She was grinning from ear to ear as she took in a deep breath and slowly let it out. It's wonderful to feel fresh air going into my lungs that belong to me and not you, Shadow. I tried to respond, but I was racked with another bout of pain as more of the magic flowing into me surged again. I winced and fell out of Aura's grip. She, however, looked to Aquila, yelling, What the hell did you just do? Where are we? Aquila just popped her neck and said, Oh, about two kilos north of what university or shadow in the foals found their way into the ministry. I didn't really want to be down in that hole when we can have a taste of fresh, well, kind of fresh air. You have no idea what it's been like spending the majority of your life in a glass bubble and the last ten years trapped inside that weakling's mind. Mom looked as angry as I felt. She started to power a spell as she growled, You haven't won yet, Aquila. I can still stop you. Aquila slowly walked over to my mother and grinned. Sit down and shut up, Grim. I'll deal with you soon. As she spoke, a flash of light escaped Aquila's horn and my mother's muzzle was forcefully shut. Then a moment later, she was forced to sit. Much better, Aquila said as she slowly started to walk along the group next to us. Do you know how annoying your voice is, Grimoire? No? Well, it's like hooves on a chalkboard mixed with the cries of foals. I don't know how your husband put up with it for so long. Mom just glared at Aquila, her horn glowing as a magic symbol started to glow around her. At the same time, Stormy started to cast a spell, and so did my uncle. All three of them blasted Aquila with a mix of their power. Aquila managed to dodge Mom's weak blast, but got hit by Stormy's. It didn't look like it did much damage, but it did manage to throw her back right into my uncle's power. That did something. She screamed in rage and pain as black shadowy magic slammed into her side. She hissed and rolled away from the blast. Oricalus followed that up with turning his body into shadows and growing, still casting bolts of shadows at her. Aura tried to move to help, but I put a hoof on hers, making her stay. She couldn't fight Aquila, let alone deal with the magic my uncle was casting towards her. My uncle started to laugh in the dark way he used to when he was pride, saying, <laughs> You think you're strong, do you, Aquila? Have you forgotten that your power is nothing compared to my own? Aquila dodged another blast of my uncle's a white light forming around her. And have you forgotten that my magic is what negates yours? She blasted a beam of pure light at my uncle. The spell missed Oricalus, faded into shadows around him. A moment later, he reappeared on the other side of her, a bolt of black energy growing around his horn. He chuckled again, and then he blasted her with the spell. The spell of blackness looked a lot like the same spell he'd used on me when I was a foal. I can see now how lucky I was that it hadn't killed me. The bolt of energy exploded when it hit her, destroying everything within five meters of the dome it created, followed by a scream of pain from Aquila. 
I was shocked to see the power my uncle had, even in his weakened state. It made me wonder if my own fight against him was really as bad as I'd thought. If this was what he could really do, then he went easy on me. Sadly, the spell didn't destroy Aquila. She was hurt, though. I could see it in her face when she emerged from the black spell with a few cuts and bruises on her body. Rikalis grinned that creepy grin of his, where he had his shadow form, and said, My body is weak against your light, but you are also weak against my darkness. We counterbalance each other, Aquila. You might be powerful, but you've never had to fight some pony with just as much magic as you have. Laura spoke up, saying in my ear, I noticed when Aquila had your body that she really didn't know how to fight. One of her abilities, she never learned from you. She relies on pure magic and overwhelming her foe with massive power. She's faced with an opponent who knows how to fight. She has a hard time keeping up. Oricalis is our secret weapon against her. Wait, you knew this would happen? I asked, looking up at her as the pain from the magic started to fade again. We always knew it was a possibility. We had Oricalis in place just in case. After I told him that I observed when I fought against her when she was in your body, he came up with a plan. He's been a soldier for a long time. He's way more experienced than she is, Aura said. As she spoke, my mom was able to break away from the spell holding her, along with Stormy. They both attacked Aura, Aquila while her back was turned. Aquila took the hits hard, but wasn't affected by it much. She still growled in anger and tried to attack Mom again. This time, Mom teleported away with Stormy. Then Aquila was hit with yet another one of my uncle's dark magic spells. Tendrils of shadows flowed up from the ground and trapped her within them. They didn't last long, though. Before Orticalis could get another hit in, Aquila's body flashed with blinding light and the shadows vanished. Nice try, Orticalis. But I can get out of simple tricks like... The hell? She said as her body locked up. Confused for a moment, I couldn't see what was wrong, until I saw a line of shadow flowing from under my uncle's glowing body and extending to Aquila's shadow. Orikalis grinned, saying, Shadow Possession Rank 1. First spell I mastered when I became what I am now. Even your light spells can't get you out of this. And if you think that's impressive, wait till you see what Rank 2 can do. His horn flashed again, and the Shadows under her started to creep up her legs, till they were wrapped around her torso and neck. They started to squeeze slowly, cutting off Aquila's air. She gagged and tried to cast another spell, but my uncle had her. Her eyes went wide as she tried to pull away from the force being put on her throat and body. From what I could see, she couldn't move. Just like that, my uncle was able to stop the monster I'd been fearing for so long. Oricala slowly moved herself close to her. Tell me, Aquila, how does it feel to be helpless? How does it feel to be under somebody else's control? He let up on the pressure just a little so she could speak. She gasped and took in a few deep breaths, then said, You haven't won, Oricalis. I still have the power to destroy you. Oh, really? Is that a fact? Oricalis's shadowy horn flashed with purple light as Aquila started screaming. From what it looked like, her energy was being drained out of her by his spell. Small motes of light started flowing from Aquila to Oricalis. As each mote of light flowed to his horn, Oricalis grew and Aquila looked weaker. Stormy helped my mom get back to her hooves as the two scientists moved closer to White Oak, all of us watching as my uncle drained Aquila of her magic. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I thought that no one could take her down, and not this easily. Why was I so scared of her all this time? Was it because of the control she had over my mind, or was she really this weak all along? Either way, it looked like my uncle's shadow magic was more powerful than whatever kind of magic she had. You see, Aquila, your power might be great, but it's no match for what I have. My power comes from being who created something that could kill magic like yours. He moved his shadowy head down and continued. And now that you're in a mortal body, 
I can kill you. There was a flash of something in Aquila's eyes as the spell Oricalus was using started to fade. My mother must have seen something because she yelled, Oricalus, get away from her! Quiet, sis, I've got this. She's too weak to take me down. She hasn't had time to adjust to her new body. This is the only time we're going to have to kill her. Oricalus said as he started to cast another spell. Quilla coughed, then said weakly, If you kill me, Oricalus, you'll never be able to help your sister activate falling shadows. I'm the key for its power, after all. If I die, you'll be failing to help your sister get what she's wanted for so many years. He growled deeply and yelled in her face. I don't give two shits about falling shadows. I don't care about you or what my sister wants. I love her, but that project is her problem, not mine. I only care about keeping my niece safe, and the best way to do that is to kill you. He looked back at Mom and said in a calmer voice, I'm sorry, sis, but I can't help you anymore with your revenge or your quest to find this project. I know I promised I would, but not anymore. I'm finished being the bad pony. I want to be good again. And it starts with not helping you anymore. I'll only help Star because I owe her so much for what I've put her through. I saw him look at me and smile. Then that was followed by Mom saying, Ori, you can't say that. He cut her off by saying, I'm finished, sis. Sorry. But that's the way it has to go. He looked at me again. I can never repay the pain I've put you through, Star. But I can at least do my best to be a better pony. One that deserves your forgiveness. I love you, Star, and I always will. Should have listened to your sister, Ori Callus, Aquila said, starting to laugh as the shadows around her neck and body started to melt away, like steam from a hot kettle. What's happening? Oricalus said as his body started to shrink and his hold on Aquila vanished. Aura pulled me back as an explosion of light came from Aquila, followed by that laugh that I was really starting to hate. When it faded, she looked as strong as she had before my uncle had attacked her. She popped her neck and grinned at Oricalus. Ah, oh, Oricalus, you really fucked up this time, didn't you? Did you forget that after all these years that... The whole reason you have all that shadow magic and that body is because of that deal you made with Mezzanote? My uncle's body was starting to shrink, and his eyes were starting to look normal again. They went wide as he realized what he just did. A moment later, so did I. The conversation he had with me about how he became immortal came back to me like a flood. I remember him saying that if he ever broke the deal he made, He'd lose the shadow body he had, and his mind and soul would be placed back in his old one, a body that hadn't been seen for sixteen years. He'd die. Mom started to cast a spell. At the same time, I tried to pull away from Aura, but Aquila cast a spell and every pony was locked to the ground and held there by some invisible force. Right then, something ripped open behind my uncle. It was like a black steel door just appeared out of nowhere. It was covered in runes and had chains over the door that hung loosely around the handles. As Aquila, Aquila giggled in glee, my uncle slowly turned and looked at the door right as it split in two, opening just the lightest amount. Every pony just watched in our, with our mouths open as a single blood-red eye appeared in the crack and came out, the voice that I heard in Moonlight's memory crystal. The voice of that zony Bezanote, saying, Ori Kalos, the Chateau Heart, you have failed me. As he spoke, it was like all the light around the door and my uncle's shadow form started to fade. My uncle stood as tall as he could as he responded, I've done nothing. I promised all those years ago. I'm done being a lackey for every pony else. I'm sick of this evil power that's eating away at my soul. You want your power back after one time of me saying I'm finished helping my sister? 
Then fine. Take it back. The voice got louder as it screamed. I gave you a sliver of my power. I told you to do one thing, just one, and that was to help her find this project and to activate it. When I made a deal, there is no going back. You will do as you promised, or pay the consequences. Ori, don't do it. You'll never survive. Mom yelled. I watched my uncle looking back at her, then at me with a smile on his face. You were right, Star. There is still a little bit of light deep within my rotting soul. Thank you for believing in me. Then he looked back at the door, ignoring the laughter coming from Aquila, as he said. I'll use what power I have left, Mezzanote, and destroy her before any pony else can unlock that project. You want me to kill, kill me for that? Then have at it. I'm finished. He whipped around and started to cast a massive spell, a purple glow around his horn getting brighter and brighter. The laugh from Aquila died as she saw what my uncle was doing. She took a step back, fear building in her eyes. Then a tendril of shadow flew out of the door. It slammed into my uncle's back right when he cast the spell. Everything went quiet as I watched my uncle scream in pain at the same time Aquila tried to block whatever he'd just cast. She wasn't fast enough. The blast of energy slammed into her, throwing her body back to a good 20 meters until it slammed into a rock. If you want to pull back on my deal, Oricalus, that is fine. I'll take back that immortal body that I gave you and let you go back to the weak, pathetic body that you had before. Trust me, it is not in good shape after all those years of neglect from being in my domain. Enjoy your mortal death. Oricalus, the voice said. As we watched, there was a flash of dark energy. Now my uncle screamed louder as the shadows that made up his body were pulled back through the door, leaving only a small moat of light. The light flashed, then whizzed forward towards a dull gold body that had appeared right in front of the door. It was emaciated and lifeless, so the moat of light slammed into it, and the body gasped and screamed weakly. Ori, no! Mom yelled, trying to get up. I noticed just then that the spell holding us down was gone. Mom and I both pulled away from Stormy and Aura and ran towards the thin body of my uncle. Before we made it to him, the voice said, Shadow Star, I'll be seeing you soon. Then the door slammed shut and vanished with the sound of thunder as it went. We both ignored the voice as Mom and I skidded to a halt next to my uncle. Ignoring the pain in my body, I pulled my uncle close as he stopped his weak scream and just lied there, breathing slowly. Mom was trying to cast a spell over him. I just held his head and looked over the skeleton of a body he had now. It looked like he didn't have any meat left on him, just sharp edges where most of his bones pushed against the skin. Don't worry, Ori. I can help you. You can't die on me. Mom said as she started to cast a complicated healing spell. Stormy, White Oak, and Aura came up to us as well, but they stayed back as Mom started doing what she could to heal him. I just started to cry. I know it sounds pathetic, but I didn't know what to do. I just placed my head down against his bony one, saying, Why'd you have to do that? He weakly opened his eyes, looking up at me with his beautiful purple ones, and to my amazement, he smiled weakly, saying, Don't cry, Star. It's all right. I'm free of that evil now. Don't talk, Mom said, tears running down her face as she kept casting her spell. Star, are you proud of me? He asked, sounding delirious, almost like he was dreaming. Did I... Do the right thing, Star. His eyes went glassy as he faded into some memory of his. You are going to be powerful one day, little Star. So powerful. Beautiful. I can't wait to see who you become. Lori, 
I'm all grown up now. I'm still here. I'm safe. Thanks to you. I said. His eyes focused again, and he smiled once more. There she is. My little star. Did... Did I stop her? You did. I said, looking over, and seeing that Quilla was lying in the heap right where she landed after his attack. Good. That's good. He looked around. This... Why are you crying? your body is shutting down, you stupid jerk. I don't even know how your body is still working. I'm trying to fix the damage, I find, but... It's just too much. She said. Sis. You're more... It's okay. It's time. I should have died a long time ago. His eyes went back to mine. I should have died when I hurt you. I'm just glad that you're okay, Star. Do your uncle a favor. Get strong. Get powerful. Don't let any pony ever tell you that you're weak. His voice started to get strong, weaker. Shine bright, little star. Shine brighter than any pony else has. Ah, oh, move over, Grim. You're not helping. I heard Stormy say as she pushed Mom away from my uncle and started to cast her own spell over his body. His body's in shock. He needs water in his system and a lot of other things. But I can keep him stable until we get back to the Ministry. You can save him? Mom asked. I looked up at this too. He can? Stormy sighed, then looked over at White Oak. I'll need your transmitter. It's the only way I'm going to get him back to the Ministry before he dies. My spell will keep him in stable condition for only a small amount of time. Can you deal with everything else here? White Oak hesitated for a moment, but then nodded. No problem. I understand. When you get back, make sure you send a synth to get the cursors. Tell them we are, go we are here and we need to get an extraction team before Aquila wakes up again. We need to contain her. White Oak pulled something out of her lab coat and gave it to Stormy. Stormy took it, saying, Do what I can, but I'm more worried about Ori Kalos. I agree with Grimm. I have no idea how he's still alive. She started to do something with a small device as my uncle looked over at me. Duh. However vain that. I'm... He never finished what he was going to say. Her spell took hold and he fell asleep an orange glow around his body. A moment later, Stormy pushed me back, and they both vanished in a flash of bluish-white light. I was taken aback by her quick and sudden exit. Looking over at White Oak, I asked, Why couldn't she just take us all back? My emergency transporter only works for two ponies. If she could have used it to get us all back, then I would have suggested that. Now we need to worry about getting Aquila back before she wakes up from whatever spell Oricalus used on her, White Oak said, turning towards the smoking body of my evil half. We all turned to look at her, the two ponies who got pulled along with us, when Aquila took us away from the Ministry, looked scared as they moved to stand behind their director. One I noticed was a mare around my age. The Earth Pony looked like she was about to shake right out of her lab coat, and for good reason. I know that fear all too well of the overpowering presence of Aquila. Madam Director, how are we going to get that thing back to the Ministry? The younger mayor asked. I was going to ask that too, the Director said, looking over at my mom. Mom slowly started to walk towards where Aquila was lying. All I have is my chains of Celestia spell that might hold her for an hour or so. I can't say, because she's made up of light magic, unlike my brother's darkness. She's also in a body now, and my spell isn't as strong against a normal body. Grim, I think we should just leave and deal with her later. Shadow needs help more than we need to capture Aquila. Aura said as she came over to help me again. I was still feeling weak, and my head was starting to pound again, as the magic flowing through my head like a flood. We can't. 
If we don't deal with her now, we'll never be able to again. Mom said, starting to cast another spell. Before she even got one of her magic circles fully created, an explosion of pink light came from Aquila's body, almost knocking us down again. Then Aquila got back to her hooves, anger written over her face. I'm finished with all of you! In a flash of light, she vanished with a loud crack. A moment later, she reappeared behind the two scientists. Before either of them could run, Aquila cast a spell over the stallion, shortly followed by his scream of pain. We all whipped around just in time as the stallion's body started to bleed from every orifice. His eyes, nose, mouth, and other places started to leak boiling blood. It landed on the ground hard with a hiss, followed another moment later with his body falling to the ground dead. She turned her attention to the other one. The young mare screamed and tried to run. I started to draw Dreamwalker, pulling up quickly and entering sats, but I wasn't fast enough. Before the spell fully kicked in, a blade of light flew out of Aquila's horn and cut the poor mare in two. Her body fell onto the pieces right after, her blood and guts mixing into the dry soil in a matter of seconds. Then sats kicked in and I took aim with Dreamwalker. I fired three shots right into her chest, screaming in anger and defiance at the mare who made my life hell. To my utter shock, every bullet slammed into her, throwing her back again. I disengaged the spell and started firing shot after shot towards Aquila. How do you like me now, bitch? You like to make others suffer? Like to make them feel like nothing compared to you? Well, guess what? All you are is an abomination, an aberrance of nature, and you don't scare me anymore. I tried to fire more, but with a click, Dreamwalker was out of ammunition. I went to reload but was hit with more pain as my heart throbbed this time with my head, feeling like it was being split open again and I fell to the ground, screaming in pain. Aura rushed over to me, but Mom started casting again, yelling, I have to take her down before it's too late. It is too late, Grim. Willa yelled as she got back to her hooves. Through my pain, I saw every bullet I'd shot at her slide off a barrier she directed around her body, so close to her coat that it was barely visible. She grinned madly and cast a counterspell. The pain I felt before was nothing compared to this. It was like every cell in my body was trying to pull themselves in ten different directions at once. From the look on Aura, Mom, and White Oak's faces, I wasn't the only one who was going through this. Once again, I fell to the ground. This time, Aura falling with me as blood-curdling screams fell to my lips. Between what Aquila was doing to me, the magical overflow in my heart. I wanted nothing more than to just die then and there. Just like every time I tried to face off against Aquila, even when she was in my mind, I was losing. I mean, what could I do against a creature like her? She's made of pure light. She's born from the stars themselves. She knows more spells than I do. To make matters worse, she was going to kill us all. Mom, the mare I spent the last few weeks trying to find and later convinced that I was her daughter. The mother I thought I lost when I was still a filly. I was going to lose her again. Aura, the creature I loved more than life itself, griffin or pony, it didn't matter. I knew deep down that I loved her more than anything. Now she would die because of Aquila's hatred for me. Lastly, White Oak, her vain's mom, who she thought was killed years ago. I never able to tell her that she was alive, that she could see her again. Aquila was destroying so much, and all because I couldn't get over this stupid pain. Why did she have to draw it out like this? Either kill us, and get it over with, or just leave us alone. Why did the light side of Aquila have to shove all this magic in my damn body at once? Why couldn't she have tried to warn me and prepare me about this? I had no idea what to do with the power flowing into me right now. No idea how I could use it to fight back. It was right then that it hit me. As it did, the pain from... Quilla's spell vanished like it had never existed in the first place. I was wrong. She'd been preparing me for this magic. What have I been hearing for weeks now from my uncle, my mom, Stardust, Aura, Wind Thrasher, Wingnut, and the others? I wasn't the same mayor who left Stable 28 all those weeks ago. 
I wasn't the weak filly who ran away from her stable to escape her overmare with the Mark II. I wasn't the mare who had a hard time casting spells, or the mare who feared her own shadow. I faced down pride when he tried to kill me in Appleton. I made the Enclave see me as a threat. I beat wrath and gluttony. I was able to face off against envy and live. And I managed to survive Hoofington and a fight with an elite Enclave soldiers. I took down Gator's camp, beat Discord at his own game, beat Winter Frost, not once but twice in a fight, managed to trick the so-called goddess, and so much more. I'm not a scared filly anymore. I'm the goddess's damned courier of new Pegasus, for fuck's sake! And I'd managed to take control of my body from Aquila more than once. If today is going to be my last day on Equus, then I'm going to take this bitch down with me. The power flowing through me right now was my own magic. Magic that had been held back to keep it away from Aquila, so that I could have a chance to take her down. I couldn't let it overpower me anymore. It's time I took control of myself. Just like when Aquila tried to control my body. I'm the master, not this power. I'm going to use it to rip Aquila's new body apart. So, closing my eyes, I drew on that vast power deep inside and changed the flow of where it was going. I let it flow from the deepest part of my very soul and let it go to my horn. I started to get to my hooves, growling in anger as I looked at Aquila. As I did, a red aura started to flow over my horn as I poured more and more power into it. Aquila looked over at me in shock, saying, How are you able to rise? I know your magic as well as I know my own. I said as a secondary aura manifested over the first. Your power has no hold over me, Aquila. You can't overpower me. A third aura followed shortly after the first two. Lighting up the dim land around us in a bloody haze. I'm through letting you think that you're the most powerful one here. You chose to make sure you got your own body just so you could get away from me. Well... Congratulations. Now you have your own body, and all the flaws that go with it. How do you have the mud magic inside of you? I took mostly the power over the years. You shouldn't be able to do anything with magic after what I left you with. She said, her eyes growing wide as she let off the spell on the others and started to build up another. Welcome to the life of a mortal, Aquila. Now die! I screamed and let all of my rage and pain flow out of me and into the concentrated expulsion spell. A blast of blood-red power flew out of my horn and slammed into Aquila. She was caught completely off guard and went flying back, stuck in the blast of my pure anger. That is, until a pink light came from the large blast of magic and started to push back against what I was channeling all my power into. Then I saw my mistake. I shouldn't have said anything to her. It just gave her enough time to pull on her own power and start building up a defense. She landed on her hooves and started blasting her power right back at me, pushing the red beam of power back. I might know a power spell, but that also went for her with me. She knew how I thought, and just how to protect herself from my magic. Nice try, Shadow, but you still aren't more powerful than I am. She screamed as she pushed more and more power into her spell, pushing mine back further until we were almost even. I felt the strain the spell was causing my mind, body, and horn. I ignored it all and screamed to myself as I pulled on more of my power and let it flow into my spell, forcing her own to start pushing back little by little. Through the extreme light was emanating off of our spells, I could just make out a bit of strain on her face as she mashed, then surpassed me on what she was pushing into this one attack. The strain grew and I felt my body starting to shake with fatigue as I tried to match her. But the sad part was I knew I couldn't. I didn't understand this raw magic power flowing inside of me. To make it worse, casting the spell that I'd cast dozens of times now felt different. It was like without Aquila, my magic didn't work the same as it did before. It was hard for me to pull on and control. As her spell started to inch towards me, inch by inch, I knew the truth. Aquila 
was more powerful and had better understanding of how her power worked than I did. If I had time to practice with my new power and understand how my spells worked now, I might have had a fighting chance. But I'd acted on rage and attacked instead of getting every pony out of there. I'd have fought another day and all that crap. I can't win in a fight magic to magic against Aquila. Not yet. However, I do have another way to fight. One in which Aquila was lacking. So when her spell was within a few inches of me, and the light from our spells was almost blinding, I stopped casting my spell, ducked and rolled, letting her spell miss me by a hair or three. As I rolled, the strain of that spell hit me, but I did my best to ignore the pain that came and with letting so much power at once, and used my telekinesis to draw Mom's plasma rifle, in misery at the same time. When I came out of the roll, I took aim and fired at Aquila. With her concentration on trying to kill me, she didn't see the simple move, and my shot was true. It slammed into her side, breaking through whatever barrier she had erected around herself, and through her back with a scream of pain. I didn't let up. I fired shot after shot at her as I drew on another spell, getting Misery ready. All I had to do was teleport to the other side of her, bring Misery down on her damn neck and decapitate her. She is pie. Just know my location, draw the power into myself, use that to power my body, from place I'm wanting to be to the place I'm going. I've done this spell a hundred times. As I fired a blast after blast of burning plasma at Aquila, I cast the spell. Then, nothing happened. My horn just sputtered and sparked. I still had hold on my weapons. My magic wasn't that weak, so why didn't I teleport? At the same time, the plasma rifle clicked, and I was out of shots. Looking over at Aquila, I saw that even though I'd been firing round after round of deadly plasma at her, I hadn't done much damage. She was getting back to her hooves with that maddening grin on her face. Shadow, let me guess. You wanted to use that attack to keep me distracted while you teleported the other side of me and cut my head off? She said with a light chuckle. Too bad that the knowledge of casting a teleportation spell isn't just about knowing you can do it. No, you need to have a slight understanding of the structure of that spell. Something you've been lacking all these years? The only reason you've been able to teleport in the past is because of me. I searched my memory of teleporting and realized that she was right. I knew how to cast the spell itself, but not how the spell worked. I never have. I'd just been able to do it one day, then I needed to escape the Overmare's office. From every book I read, and from what I have heard from others, casting teleportation was an advanced spell that a unicorn needed to learn. They didn't just have the ability one day. They had to work hard to learn it. I just thought I was the exception to the rule. I was wrong. It didn't matter, though. I could still win. I just needed to change my game plan. So I changed out the magical energy cartridge of plasma rifle, took aim, and started to fire as I ran towards Aquila, yelling, I don't need my teleportation to beat you! Aquila ducked under the first few shots and teleported away, reappearing to my left. I was ready for her, though. Misery flew through the air as I twisted around. She ducked the first swing only to find the barrel of the plasma rifle in her face. With a grin, I pulled the trigger. She dodged, but still took a slight burn to her left ear. She howled in pain and cast another blast of magic at me. I grinned and brought up a barrier. That spell that I did have knowledge to, thanks to Aquila and the fight against the Steel Rangers. Her spell slammed into it and blast to each side. The barrier cracked, but held long enough for the spell to pass me without harming me. Before she could attack again, I looked back and saw Mom and the others were getting back to their hooves, finally. As I did, I yelled, I could use a little help here. Aura was the first to react. She took to the air, yelling, I'm gonna need a weapon, shrimp. I let the barrier fall and drew Dreamwalker with some ammo and threw it up to her. At the same time, Mom was starting to cast her own branch of spells, and White Oak... Well, I don't know what she was doing. It looked like she was trying to use something to call for backup. Magic and bullets started to fire down at Aquila, who dodged them and started casting again. I took the chance to move the plasma rifle to my back and attack with misery. Aquila tried to throw up the barrier, but it was no use against the magical blade. I cut through the spell like it wasn't even there. 
Aquila managed to jump back, but not before Misery sliced a line down her cheek. Blood flew, followed a moment later as a bullet from Dreamwalker hit her in the flank, making her fall onto the ground with a scream and right into the magical trap Mom had cast. The ground around us exploded, sending Aquila and me flying back. I was lucky. I was just outside the main part of the blast. Aquila, however, wasn't so lucky. She was as naked as a newborn foal. By the time she landed again, blood was flowing from multiple points in her body. She was gasping for air as she tried to get to her hooves. I started walking towards her, limply, slightly, as I lifted misery high. Time to say goodnight, Aquila. I don't think so, she said as misery fell towards her face. It was stopped a second later as she took hold of the blade with her own magic, holding it at the same point I was. Our telekinetic hold on the weapon fought for dominance as the blade moved closer to her face little by little. Then again, Aquila smiled wide. Do you really think you can kill me so easily, Shadow? Mom was running towards me, casting more spells around us, and Aura was diving with Dreamwalker in her muzzle. I had my eyes on Aquila, and they went wide as I realized that I was wrong. The cut I'd made only a moment ago was gone, like it had never existed in the first place. In the moment of shock, I lost my hold on misery, and it was ripped away from me as I was blasted back a second later by another of Aquila's spells. She started laughing as she cast another barrier around herself, spells and bullets coming at her, missing or bouncing away. She smiled. Yes. You see now, Shadow, you can't hurt me all you want, but my wounds will heal a lot faster than a normal pony. I can't die. Aquila! Mom yelled as magic circles started to surround her. Aquila ignored her and brought misery down and let it slide into my gut. My heart nearly stopped as pain once again took dominance over all other senses. I tried to scream but her hoof came down and hit me hard in the jaw, almost knocking me out. She then looked over at my friends and yelled, Come any closer, and the next time I'll drive the blade into her eye. Both Aura and Mom stopped where they were. Aura, saying, Aquila, please just let her go. You got what you wanted. You don't need to hurt her anymore. Oh, Aura, Aura, Aura. You don't understand, do you? It's not about needing to hurt or kill Shadow. I'm doing this because I want to. I want the body I was trapped in for ten years to be nothing more than a rotting corpse. I want my revenge on all the ponies and their descendants for what I went through for my existence on Equus. But don't worry. You and Grim will be next, followed by everyone else who's related to the Children of the Night. After that, the rest of Pony Kind will pay, she said. When she spoke, she twisted misery a little, making me almost pass out from the pain. Mom took a step closer, but Aquila shot a spell at her, making her step back instead. With a frown of anger on her face, Mom started whispering something to Aura, who had just landed next to her. Aura nodded and kept on listening. While they talked, Aquila looked back at me. So, should I kill you quickly or slowly? I'm thinking slowly... Make you feel the whole torment I had to live with for years. What do you say? Fight me, I said weakly as I tried to think of something I could do to stop her. Slowly it is, then, she said. Ripping misery out of me and then using her telekinesis, she flipped me around and slammed me down onto the ground. I was about to scream at her again, then searing pain came from my right foreleg, followed by the feeling of uh, loss, the same leg. Looking over, I saw my right foreleg was missing from just above the mid-joint. It was now lying a few feet away, twitching as blood flowed from where it had once been attached to my body. I started to scream, but my air was cut off as she started to choke me with her magic. Tears fell from my eyes as I struggled to get the small bit of air I could into my lungs. I'll kill you, Aquila! I heard Aura yell, but she was ignored. Don't worry, Shadow. I won't let... That kill you so quickly. Here, let me cauterize that for you. We don't want you bleeding out too fast now, do we? 
she said, followed by even more pain as she burned my flesh with another spell, stopping most of the bleeding from my lost foreleg. A shot rang out from Dreamwalker, but the shot missed when Aquila cast another spell to protect herself from the weapon. With tears in my eyes, I looked out up at her, saying weakly, You're pathetic. <laughs> 